you appreciate your being part of it here on Birds 365. While you're at it, you can hit the like button. They always do. When Gil comes on, everybody hits the like button. Why? I don't know, but they seem to like him. So we appreciate those of you who do. Uh, Mike Gill looks like he's rocking some kind of hoodie this morning, much like Nick Foles and uh, Nick Foles, Nick Sirianni and uh, Jalen Hurts. What do you got on the hoodie today, Gil? What's it say? Uh, just plain? Just blue. Nothing special? No, no uh, WBU today. Uh, no, I thought about it, but. Yeah, and, and yeah no, no, it's a Philly thing today. That was yeah, the big thing in the Eagles uh, locker room. I don't want to pander to anybody yeah. today. Come the on. Pander, yeah, the pander in chief, uh, you know, but people aren't happy, Mike, because he didn't get the right pizza. He didn't go local. No, Your own listen. producer. I want to rip Josh Hennig. Nice guy. But he was one of those snobs. Uh, you know, I was making fun of the whole thing, and he was like, well, he should order from a local pizza. I mean, come on. Can I, who cares? I, I wanted to know, as soon as he said that, and then like, it's everywhere, how many people last night either thought about because they haven't ordered Pizza Hut in however long or actually said, you know what? I'm going to get Pizza Hut tonight. Like, that was a yeah, tremendous. Yeah, they should get a sponsorship. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Least, How many least, people thought about it or actually pulled the trigger? Guilty as charged. I absolutely did. Uh, didn't get it because there's not a pizza hut in my area. The one we had shut down 20 years ago. So that's why I just don't get pizza. If it was still close, I'd still get it. But it shut down 20 years ago. But it absolutely w worked on me. And uh, you're right. Sirianni should at least get a uh, free pie sent over to him today, uh, later today. Right. All right. Here's what I need out of you, Gil. I asked this of John in the first segment. I had BLG on my uh, uh, WIP show last night. If you felt the way you felt about Jalen Hurts at this time yesterday, and then you had the assembly of the Eagles down in South Philly and the listing on the injury list and the uh, quotes by Jalen Hurts afterwards, I, I, John and I both feel better about it. Don't know to the same degree. So I'm asking you. How much better do you feel about Jalen Hurts and his ailing shoulder after the first day of activity leading up to the giant game yesterday? Um, I mean, I would say that I'm almost not even thinking about it at this point. Wow. I don't know. That might sound like, how can you not think about it? I mean... I don't know what the injury was. None of us really do. But, you know, John had been on my show a bunch, and, and we had kind of thought it was like a two- to three-week thing. We're talking about five, six weeks now since this happened. I mean, that game that he played in, he played in a game two weeks ago. If he was healthy enough and cleared to play in a NFL football game, he had to have been healthy enough that you're not concerned about this injury going forward. This is two weeks later. I've woke up some, now I'm 45 years old, but I've woke up some days where like out of nowhere, I have no idea what happened and I can't put any weight on my ankle. And then the next day, it's just gone, like gone. This guy's <laughs> 24 years old. I, I can't imagine if he played in a National Football League game with an injury that two weeks later that it's not significantly better after really doing nothing. I, I kind of at the point now where I think, is he going to be limited? I don't think the playbook will be limited. How about that? Yeah, and that's kind of how I phrased it as well, Mike. The playbook isn't going to be limited. Now I want to see, you know, it's interesting because that's what the, the medical sort of documentation is, right? Grade two. SC joint shoulder sprain two to three weeks, but here's where, and, and we had a doctor on, on, on this program who kind of explained it. Uh, well, uh, Jess Flynn, um, you know, the difference is it, 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 these, these, you know, sort of timetables are, are talking about normal people, which, you know, you don't, sprain your SC joint, maybe in a car accident, you got to have a, a, a weird hit. And then you're going to go out and be in another car accident. Uh, Jalen Hurts, even though he's 24, even though 
as Nick Sirianni says, he has superpower like healing capabilities. He does the injury, and then he's going out and having 260 pounds edge rushers going at him again. And even if it's going to practice and throwing the football, well, typically, if you're just rehabbing from this injury, you're just taking it easy. He can't take it easy. That's why my concern is, well, there's two concerns. One, if he gets hit on the button again, uh, that's a big concern. And obviously, we know Wink Martindale is going to bring the house, uh, even though he he gave the Vikings a curveball. That's because the Vikings are the Vikings. He's not going to do that against the Eagles. Um, so that's number one. Number two is is the setup. Look, I expect the Eagles to beat the Giants. Then you got one week, and you're back at it again against either the 49ers or Cowboys when he had the two weeks off and, and things could calm down with that injury, Mike. And if they get to the Super Bowl, you have two weeks off again. But in between, you got to go through all those car crashes with that injury, and you got to be out there a week a week later. Those are my two concerns. Uh, right. You know, the, the constant action that is about to come that, you know, could – it, it could further bring the injury back or reoccur or cause some more pain. Um, but I think entering this game, it's almost to the point where I'm, I'm at peace with, I think he's going to be pretty good. The playbook's going to be, you know, the game, we've said it before, if he plays the game that he played two weeks ago, they're not winning this game, right? Uh, most likely we're talking about what a disappointment this was and how unfortunate it was that the quarterback got hurt that late in the season and it really affected his play. I don't know when we're all back, your guys on Birds 365, me on 97.3, doing my show on Monday that we're talking about they lost this game because Jalen Hurts was not Jalen Hurts. I think you're going to get uh, the, the version that we saw for most of this year. I, I think that the playbook will be open. He will be making his decisions and he made decisions at an MVP level this year. That's why he was in that conversation and deserved to be in that conversation. Every decision he made, I mean, I don't know how many plays he was a part of this year, but he made the right decision probably 98% of the time. That's unbelievable. And we'll see what those decisions are on Saturday. I'm glad to hear or get the feeling both of you guys a little bit more optimistic than I am. And I'm not pessimistic, but... And Gil's like, injury? What? Shoulder? Um, <laughs> I, I'm not quite there yet. But where I am on the positive side, the optimistic side, is Lane Johnson. I think they're going to plug and play Lane Johnson, and he's going to be the pro bowl, all pro, future all of fame level right tackle that he has been for years here in Philadelphia, even though his injury is supposedly more severe than the one Jalen Hurts is dealing with, and he's coming back basically on the same time frame Jalen Hurts did. Um, is this just rooting interest that I got eagle colored glasses on? I know I got different coloration on my face, but I'm not wearing glasses. I can assure you that. Maybe wearing a hat. Uh, where are you at with Lane Johnson and what level he's going to play at on Saturday? See, that's where I'm a little concerned. Uh, we've seen this rodeo with Lane Johnson before you know, with the ankle, he tried to play. Now that could have been a byproduct of, look, the team lane is just not good enough. We know you're trying, but you know, we're not, it's this year is just not there. Go get the thing fixed. Um, he played in the giant game that they won 48 22 and he had to leave that game. Now he did say afterwards, I could have gone back if they needed me. Um, if he's out there, I think he's going to play at an all pro level. You're going to see that it's the pain tolerance thing. And it's something going to happen where he twists or turns or something where he has to leave the field. And you're back to this. Is he coming back? Is he leaving? Is he, you know, I, I feel like he is definitely more of a question than hurts at the end of the game. We might say, Hey, they both got through the game. They both played really well. But I think of the two, the guy that I'm more concerned about getting through the game would be Lane Johnson. And, and if he's out, it really changes the dynamics of the playbook, I think. And let, let me follow up, uh, if you do, uh, allow me, John. 
I actually got a, a foolish call last night who said, and if they don't help Lane Johnson on that side of the uh, defensive line, <laughs> they're going to I'm, be in trouble. I'm sorry. I'm and laughing. I'm going, are you kidding me? <laughs> With his backup, they didn't give extra help on that side. With Lane Jan Johnson standing on the sidelines, they stuck to their offensive philosophy. You really think they're going to get now? Uh-oh. Lane's not quite 100%. We better put an extra tight end in there. We better keep a back end to chip on that side. Are you nuts? They will play Lane Johnson the way they played Lane Johnson every game, certainly since Sirianni got yeah. here and probably all the way back to Dougie P. Um, there's going to be no change whatsoever in the Eagles. We're actually debating as to whether the Eagles will once again, like they did against the Giants two weeks ago, alter their overall way of calling plays because of the injury to the quarterback. They're not going to have any change whatsoever because of Lane Johnson, are they? No, no, no I would not uh, anticipate that. The only change would be they could do more. <laughs> the only change they could do yeah. uh, because Lane Johnson's out there is they have more trust in, in what they can do on that side of the ball. Um, look, Lane Johnson, though, we all know the record when he's not out there. Were they 13 and 22 or something like yeah, that? It's, and he's uh, not there. Uh, I think he's key. I mean, the Giants, you mentioned something, John, about Wink Martindale. I think that is going to be a very interesting story. Uh, you sound pretty adamant that Wink's going to send pressure. They blitzed 55% of the time against the Eagles this year. They blitzed, and it did not work. The Eagles blitzed them when they blitzed this year. Uh, Jalen Hurts was significantly better and more effective when the Giants blitzed them. They didn't blitz last week. They blitzed 22% of the time. Now you're saying, well, that's because it's the uh, Vikings. You got a guy who you think might be compromised. So, yeah, it sounds like they would blitz them. But is Wink Martindale also saying, we've blitzed them enough this year, and they've blitzed us. Should we show them something different? That, to me, is going to be a very interesting – maybe it's not a chess match. Maybe it's more checkers. But I, I, I'm interested to see if Wink Martindale finds his inner John Gannon. I see people in the mm -hmm. chat. If the Eagles lose, it's because of John Gannon. The Giants are only <laughs> at this point because they found their inner John Gannon. Yeah. That's why they're mm -hmm. here. That's why they beat the Vikings last week, because they did not blitz the Vikings. Because if they did blitz the Vikings like they did the first time, they would have lost. Yeah, most likely. Uh, Wink did a tremendous job, but you and I talk about this all the time. People put too much into what happens one week into the next week. And they're two completely different teams where Wink got it right, you mentioned you can't deal with Jefferson and 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 man to man coverage. No, you can't deal with AJ Brown um, either. Uh, so there are different parts of it in the equation. One of them was Dexter Lawrence dominated that game because the center's Garrett Bradbury and the left guard's Ezra Cleveland. Uh, poor pass protectors. This time you have Jason Kelsey and and Landa Dickerson and Isaac Samalo. Dexter's a great player, but he's not going to get 10 pressures or whatever he got. So you can't just afford to sit back there. Kayvon Thibodeau, I, as I told Jody before he came on, you know, two years later, I might be talking differently. But right now, Lane Johnson at 80, 85% against Kayvon Thibodeau is a Mitch match in the Eagles' favor. I mean, he's going to dominate that kid. He's got four sacks, and people see the big name and, you know, top 10 pick, and they go, oh, Kayvon Thibodeau. He hasn't been that good as a rookie. I think he's going to be a, a good player. And then here's the second part where Wink is going to talk himself into it. The Dory Jackson, Xavier McKinney are back. They weren't there uh, when the Eagles uh, destroyed the Giants at MetLife Stadium. He's going to have more confidence in the back end. And then the final, the tying the bow together, he wants to hit the quarterback because the quarterback has a shoulder injury. And he wants to test the shoulder. And he's not going to get home with a four-man rush against this offensive line. So it's basically pick your poison if you're Wink Martindale. But his default setting is blitz. Yeah. He's going to blitz. Well, that's a good thing for the Eagles then. I mean, if they're going to blitz, and, and I agree to, to the most extent. I 50% I, of the time, 
Maybe they dial back a little bit on that, but they still blitz on average about 44, 45% of the time. But, you know, I do think that you're right. I, I just am interested to see if he says, you know what, I'm going to show more restraint. Well, he might show to- some more. We should, like you said, 55 is a ridiculous number. And if AJ starts gashing them early down the field, you know, yeah. you have to adjust. Uh, that's the problem dealing with the Eagles offense when everything is in play. You know, you can try to stop AJ Brown, but then you got Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, vice versa. Um, you can, if Jalen Hurts uh, in the zone read is back in play, you got to deal with the running game and you got to worry about the quarterback. And, oh, yeah, you're built on the foundation of the best offensive line in football. Well, and and the first time they played, Miles Sanders had 17 carries, 177 yards. He was not on the injury report yesterday. He's been wearing that brace. I'm imagining that maybe they take the, you know, the blinders off of him, too, and that he's able to kind of be. Yeah, it's the playoffs, man. They are. There's not going to be a pitch count. He's been on a pitch count. Jalen Hurts is going to run the zone read. Um, there's nothing to save anybody for anymore. You got to win. And even though it looks relatively easy on paper from this perspective, usually at this point, there's some genuine concern. Uh, if the Eagles play well, they're going to win this game. Uh, the question is, you know, health wise and, 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 and where that playbook, as you mentioned before, Mike, that they try to scale the playbook, then you have some issues. But I don't think that's going to be the case. And a key aspect for me, if you just work off last week's game against Minnesota, which they did keep Jefferson in check, they got to the quarterback without having to send uh, blitz packages. And TJ Hawkinson kind of lit him up. And I like TJ Hawkinson. And when the Vikings made the trade, I thought it was an outstanding acquisition. He's not Dallas Goddard. So if they try and throw the same defense out that they did against Minnesota, could Goddard be the key guy downfield? Know the relationship between Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown. And you know how big a Devonta Smith fan I am. But if I'm get, making a guess on one guy who's going to have a breakout game, I think it could be Goddard against those giant linebackers in pass coverages. And if Jalen's shoulder is any questionable at all, the easiest throws usually to make are to the tight end. You think this could be a breakout week for uh, Dallas Goddard, Mike? I'm a big Goddard fan. I think he is uh, an outstanding weapon that unfortunately uh, gets overshadowed name-wise because of some of the other guys he plays with and then the other tight ends that he's up against. But, yeah, I I agree. Hawkinson – uh, really, the last couple of weeks, the Giants have had some struggles. Now, um, if they if they <laughs> if they blitz a lot and there's one on one coverage on the outside, I I don't know that he is as effective because I think you go back to what they did the first, really the first and second time they played him. When the Giants blitz, Hurts threw it up and there's one on one coverage. AJ Brown was getting 37 yard passes down the field. They did have a play, though, where the Giants sent pressure and they jumped over the top a little tight end screen to Goddard, and he ended up getting about a 30-yard catch on that. But, yeah, Goddard, to me, you know, you see Hawkinson. uh, I agree. I I like Hawkinson. Like, if Detroit would have kept Hawkinson, you know, they they ended up trading him because they were way out of it, and then they got back into that thing. Think about a weapon that they just kind of gave up on um, that that was a big factor for Minnesota. But Goddard, to me – He's up there with the Kittles and the Kelseys in terms of how good he can be. Uh, he's not nearly as effect. Uh, I guess he's not nearly the center, but like he, uh, Kelsey's the whole offense out there. Essentially, he's most of the pass game. Kittle has been a much bigger part. They got a lot of weapons, but Kittle's been a lot bigger part of the offense since Purdy has taken over. Um, and, and Goddard just isn't on that. Uh, level because of everybody that's around him he's kind of the third option in the pass game and then of course they have such a effective run game I think that takes away some of his league-wide name recognition yeah and uh you know I I picked Dallas Goddard I was wrong uh it was Lane Johnson but I picked Dallas Goddard before the season as my top overall Eagles player just pure football player I still think he's number two or three but Lane was so good this year uh, he was number one. Um, 
Now, one bad piece of injury news, Mike, was that uh, Abonte Maddox, it, it looks like, um, still early, uh, but it looks like he's not going to be able to go. He was the only player who wasn't estimated to participate in the walkthrough yesterday. You know, that sort of, you have these moving parts. We always talk about moving parts on the offensive line. The Eagles don't like it defensively. It's worked out. Uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson returns. They put him in the slot when they need a nickel back. They let him play safety when they don't need a nickel corner. Um, any concern, no Abonte Maddox? Um, Long term, if he doesn't come back, yes. This would be the week that you would have the least concern. The Giants are pretty limited. You know, the funny thing about Eagles fans <laughs> – this is the matchup that everybody would say, I'll play the Giants again. Now that they've won, the fact that they've won, people are now like a little concerned. I, I get the sense that people have some yeah. concern oh, after, yeah. they just, I, after they just won. I said, well, they have to win the game for you to match up with them, and this is the matchup <laughs> they wanted. So the fact that they won, you can't now be concerned. They are so limited. You mentioned this on my show yesterday, John, and, and and I talked about it as well. Minnesota's defense is just not – like, think of the Eagles Bad. last year. They it's played yeah. they, they played the John Gannon for, rushing four, not blitzing a whole heck of a lot. The problem was the Eagles' defense last year was not talented enough to play that defense, and that's why they had some problems. They had Steve Nelson, who was not fast enough – to, to, to cover, so they had to play him so far off the ball. They didn't have enough pressure up front to really get enough pressure, uh, and they had problems with that defense last year. They got better as the year went on, but they just weren't talented enough. Minnesota's defense doesn't have enough talent. They, they're slow in the secondary. They don't get enough – they don't have enough rotating rushers up front, um, and the Giants, who are limited, limited on the outside, were able to use that to their advantage. That's not going to happen. That shouldn't happen this week. That's why I think Maddox being out is not as big of a deal in this particular game. Now, if he's out against Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and that crew, oh, yeah. that's that, different. That's, that's he's different. out, you know, yeah. against the CD Lamb. The way they used Lamb the last time, uh, I think you have a little bit more of a question. And oh, by the way, I want to shoot down a a line of logic that people have expressed since we knew this was going to be the matchup the improved New York Giant football team. Really? How are we measuring that? At one point this year, the Giants were 6-1. and one. They finished up 9-7-1. and one. You want to go 9-6-1, and one, not count the game that they brought the JV players in against the Eagles. I did the same thing for the Eagles last year in the last game against the Cowboys. So I should give the Giants at least the same accord. So from 6-1 and one to 9-6-1, and one, Where's the improved giant team? Do we need to go all the way back to preseason expectations? Because I know I did. I know John did. Neither one of us thought the Giants were going to be any good. They were going to be a below 500 team. They're going to be a two-horse race in the East. Eagles and Cowboys, Commanders and Giants, well behind on both. And to their credit, they they passed preseason expectations. But wh where is the giant massive improvement? Because they beat up a... Nick Foles led Colt team to lock in a playoff spot in week 17. Is it just last week when they beat up on the Vikings, which is one of the worst defenses in the NFL? Where is this mindset coming? Hey, it's a much improved giant team from the one that uh, the Eagles whitewashed uh, four, six weeks ago up there in their place. Not really. They let's see from there. Oh, they beat the commanders on one of the, worst non-calls of the entire year the pass interference in the end zone at the end of the game when commanders were down eight and the giant d-back just flat out mugged the guy in the end zone and the ref said penalty i don't see a penalty on that one all right fine that's uh their uh, their key win and then like i said the cult win other than that uh, they got beat by minnesota where does the line of logic come that the giants are a much improved team mike gill well i think it's the fact that the Eagles fans, you know, a lot of times don't get to see the Giants. They're on at the same time. Last week, you got a chance to lock in and watch them for a full game. And if you did watch them last week for the first time in a full game setting, they did look pretty good. Uh, Daniel Jones looked pretty good last week. Now, if you look back, 
you'd see Daniel Jones threw for 300 yards. He ran for 70 plus yards. And he did that a couple of weeks ago. It happened to be against the same team, the Vikings. Yeah. If you sprinkle in the rest of his starts, he really only threw for over 200 yards a handful of times this year. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's the fact that you saw them play. They looked good last week against it. Look, I think most of us would say that Minnesota team, we were not all that impressed with. Um, the other thing would be, Jody, I do think that Eagles fans understand that this is a well-coached Giants team. That Dayball has certainly, you know, why are they so improved from last year to this year? The roster is not much better. They only, I think they only made like two free agent signings. It's not like they went out and became one of those teams that signed all these guys and made all these moves that had you looking at the Giants. This team is just way better prepared and way better coached. Um, that is what has them, you know, you mentioned Brian Dable or the coach of the year thing. He probably should and will win that award. And I think that's one of the reasons why you look at this team. It's, it's like anything, you know, when Jacksonville hired Urban Meyer last year, who ended up being a complete failure, there was intrigue in that team. Like, ooh, this could be a fun, interesting team. They got this new coach. And it ended up being a dumpster fire. Not that Dable had that kind of cachet, but now that they're here, it's – this guy's a good coach. Like they're going to be really well prepared and you know, what kind of game plan are they going to have? And I think they deserve that with him because he's done that good of a job to get them here. Yeah. I, I, at Mike Gill show, by the way, last one from me, Mike, the sports bash ESPN, South Jersey. Um, you, you, Brian Dayball is, he's my coach of the year. Um, and, and probably because my definition is doing the most with the least. And I think he's done the most with the least. Um, and Doug Peterson would also be in that conversation. Maybe that's a little unfair to Nick Sirianni because I didn't expect uh, the Eagles to be this good. Uh, but they were this good. Um, and he deserves credit for that. Lovey Smith, I, most with the least. I, I – <laughs> That's that's a good – well, certainly the last play of the season, I give Lovey a lot of credit for, to sticking it to Houston on the way out the door. But uh, I, um, from the coaching perspective here, I do get that feeling like Eagles from Eagles fans. Like, whoa, the Giants are so well coached. Not only Dayball, but Wink and, and, and Mike Kapka, um, who's getting head coaching nibbles already in his young coaching career. Um, the Eagles are 14 and stinking one with the starting quarterback. Um, but Gannon stinks. We all know that. Um, <laughs> Nick's, Nick's a goop ball, uh, ordering stuff, cross pizza, Shane Steichen, either he runs it too, uh, too little, passes it too much or vice versa, depending on the week. Um, why, why is, you know, this is a pretty good stat. Why are they like, Ooh, uh, yeah, how do you how do you match up with the preparation of Brian Dayball, who I love? Staff's pretty good. Yeah, I think the Eagles staff is interesting. Um, this is we talked about this on my show. You know, the fact you know you got Peterson wins that game, and then all these Eagle fans are outpouring of Dougie P. Great job! Like there is like this look over there of huh where your guy lost in the playoffs last year. He'll get another chance at it. And this staff, really, they didn't have any turnover on this staff. So this staff got a taste of the playoffs. Didn't go very well last year. Not that you thought it would. If you enter this game and this staff loses a second time in two playoffs, are you going to start to to question anything about – well, they already do question the defensive coordinator, certainly – uh, the offensive of coordinator, I don't think, gets as much scorn, nor does he really deserve the scorn. Uh, but Nick Sirianni as the head coach, uh, like I, I think he is. While the team is good, and he's, you know, I think he's very popular. I, I, I don't think that he's uh, negatively looked upon. But if he was to lose this game, I, you wonder what people would think of Nick Sirianni. I don't know if people like outpouringly love this guy. I don't certainly don't think they hate that he's an interesting cat in this whole thing because he doesn't get a lot of the scorn well they only lost three games that being said he doesn't get a lot of the scorn when the game is too close for people you know that usually goes to Gannon they should have blitzed more they didn't do this they should, the team shouldn't even have been in the game uh so I, I definitely think that 
the Eagles coaching staff is kind of a weird relationship with a team that's 14 and three, right? I mean, isn't it? It's You're tremendously weird that there would be less questions. I for mean, a that's fourteen. I, and I always say, you know, and and it, that Jalen Hurts got hurt. That's part of it, no question. But again, fourteen and one with the starting quarterback, um, top five offense, top five defense, franchise record for wins. Franch been around since nineteen thirty three. Now, granted, they weren't playing sixteen games that whole time. Now they play seventeen, but they were at thirteen and one. Uh, before Jalen Hurts got hurt. Um, again, top five offense, top five defense, record number of sacks. That's all the fans want. Sack, 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 sack. Go get the quarterback. Record almost set the NFL record. Forget about the franchise record. Came up a little bit short. Yeah, it's bizarre to me. It's bizarre. I, I said, you know, start, I, I'll say it right now. The Eagles aren't going to be this good next season. They might be good. They're not going to be this good. Yeah, they have a lot of decisions to make as soon as this uh, season's over, and a lot of them on that defensive side of the ball. And look, quite frankly, whether we like it or not, John Gannon most likely, uh, or I guess there's a 50-50 shot that he's not here uh, if he's the favorite in Houston. Shane Steichen could follow him out the door. And a lot of this offense – a lot of the good feel on this offense, guys, is the fact that Jalen Hurts has said, you know, I got the same play caller for two straight years now. Never had that before. If Steichen walks out the door, you got to find him. Either you go back to Sirianni as the play caller or you bring, I don't know, there's somebody on the staff here that they have a good feel about that could walk right back into the same offense. Whatever it is, it's not going to be the same, right? It, it, whoever, whatever happens, there's a good possibility that this staff is not intact next year at two very key spots. All right, Mike, last one, and this is crystal ball time. If let's just say Dexter Lawrence and all 340 pounds of him uh, on either a run or a passing play happens to land on Jalen Hurts just right, and the shoulder goes bad and he's got to come out of the game, can the gardener, the mustache, lead the Philadelphia Eagles to a coming-off-the-bench victory against the New York Giants? Sure. I mean, look, Gardner had a tough game against the Saints. There's no question about that. But he has also displayed that he – now, I don't think he has ever, since he's been with the Eagles, had to come into a game in that situation. He, he has started games. He has not had to come in in relief in the middle of a game that was meaningful. He's come in relief in blowouts. And I don't think he's ever come in in the middle of a game that's competitive. He's either started the game or he's been in a blowout. But, yeah, I mean, Gardner is a well-paid, competent backup. Uh, that, that's the reason why the Eagles went and got him. And this is a, key, a team in the Giants that Gardner would probably flourish against. You know, he has had his good games um, in the past. You know, he, well, he had a good game against Dallas's defense, which is far superior to the Giant defense. I mean, he threw for over 300 yards for, in that game. Uh, he'd also turn the ball over a couple times, and that's yeah. the concern with him. But, yeah, I, I think if, if they had to turn to Gardner and the game was still competitive, uh, sure, that he could he could lead on, uh, them back. The big problem would be if he was the quarterback for an extended period of time. If Hurts just got knocked out and couldn't play the rest of the way, well, then I think you have some questions moving forward. You would have a possible – man – uh, Brock Purdy, Purdy Gardner, Gardner Minshew, Minshew who, possible who, who matchup. Who doesn't want to see that? Brock yeah. Purdy versus that, Gardner That would Minshew. be a massive mismatch <laughs> in favor of the visiting team if that were the case. If <laughs> Gardner's got if Gardner's got to play a half this upcoming week, Eagles DOA. That on arrival, not happening. Uh, he's neither highly paid and or all that. He, he's compared to the other backups in the NFL. He's good. Compared to the other starting quarterbacks in the NFL, he's lacking. And no, he's question. A, no question. No yeah, question. Right, but this Giants team is lacking. Let's not forget that, right? This Giants team is lacking as well. And this would be, I think, a monumental disappointment if oh, they lost this game. I, I will this game. rip this team to high heaven. Tune in uh, Monday if they lose this game. They ain't losing this game. They're not losing this game. This would have to be a complete, complete collapse 
in the same way they lost to Washington. I'm talking four turnovers. I'm talking mistakes all over the field. I, I did, this is a mismatch from a personnel standpoint. Mismatch, yeah, and that's what we talked about. You know, the only way they'll avoid being crushed by yours truly as well is if Gardner Minshew actually does have to come into the game. Uh, that, that would get him a pass in my eyes. But other than that, we're all in agreement. Eagles should and probably will win this game. Mike Gill, always good to get you on, brother. Appreciate the hoodie look at uh, you got to be a little better with the Panda and Chief stuff going forward, though. Uh, yeah. Just plain blue isn't going to cut it. But <laughs> No, I got some design on here, man. Look at that. There we go. What's, there we what's go. the logo? A little bit. Who's uh, it's a Patagonia. I got it from my there girlfriend. There we go. That's uh, like uh, Pizza Hut. Hopefully we get a back? sponsorship. Yeah, by the way, uh, a Twitter poll that I put out, 60% thought about ordering Pizza Hut. 40% actually ordered it. Wow, that's a yeah. good number. That's the uh, good. Yeah, Nick's got to get at least one comp big five. He's got to get a commission. Got to get a commission for that. Got to get yeah. a commission for that. I can but see the disrespect to stop and eat instead of prepare for the New York Giants. What profound disrespect. Well, I don't know. I don't know the Philly pizza scene nearly as well. So, uh, like, like, if he was down the shore, you know, people would be getting on him because he didn't go to like Tony's Baltimore Grill. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you know, you got to well, get Josh a got on him. Josh got on him because he should have went local. Uh, right, but I'm saying, where's the local spot? I don't know oh, where. There's, Nick there's local... a million of them. There's well, a million yeah, and a half of them. Manco and Manco's has got has got to be the number one spot, no. right? Down the shore. Down if, the shore. Well, if you're in Ocean, C- right? Yeah, if you're in Ocean City, they actually have a spot in Summers Point too. But like, yeah, I mean, if you're in Atlantic City. You go to Tony's Baltimore Grill, you get a pie over there. You know, you maybe go over to uh, Tony Bologna's. Yeah. And, you know, another West Virginia guy, Kevin Kincaid uh, at Crossing Broad, he knows. Well, you know, whether it's IPAs, whether it's pizza, whether it's cheesesteaks, everybody's got to chime in. Just let yeah. everybody live. If somebody wants pizza, yeah, go get pizza. If exactly. they want this stinking Tough cheesesteak. Cross. Go get this cheese steak. You know, those Pizza Hut's bringing back the New Yorker, the big New Yorker pizza from the 90s. They're bringing that back. Yes. Did did not know that. I'm going to have to get one of those. It was a big Uh, story. It was a big story last week. There's a Pizza Hut for uh, five minutes from my studio that I honestly could have – I totally forgot it was sitting there. And it's right on Tilton Road in in EHT it's like right on the road and com- I haven't been in a pizza hut my god I can't believe it but I literally said hey you know my girlfriend's away so I'm like at home by myself this week so I was like huh maybe a pizza hut doesn't sound like such a bad idea there Nick Sirianni exactly mm-hmm. right uh, as always Mr. Gill quality information and opinion from you we thank you for it uh, we will get you up again next week Win or lose, better not be a loss because, yeah, we'll all be beating up on the birds if that's the case. Appreciate you jumping in with us today, bud. We'll talk to you next week. All right, fellas. Take care. All right, guys. Thanks, Mike. Here with us on uh, Birds 365. All right, quickie comment before we go to break. Um, a couple of you guys have noted it on the uh, stream. My camera is not fuzzy. My face is fuzzy, Okay. For those of you who didn't see us at the beginning of the week, yours truly had a uh, medical procedure last week. I had to have some skin cancer removed from the top of my noggin. Um, Due to the digging around they had to do up there, it caused some trauma. And yeah, it's now getting a little orange in there. Now, that's always a good sign because it's got to go from purple to orange. Mm. So the coloration of my face is not due to any camera misfunction that I have. No, that's my actual ugly face. That uh, I'm I'm coming back from a little uh, uh, s- specific swelling on my face. So I I'm a gamer. I play through pain. I'm gonna be just like Lane Johnson. Other than the look of it, you're not gonna be able to tell. I'm gonna be at the top of my game. Those of you who were listening earlier in the week and knew the backstory, thanks for saying. I hope I'm feeling better. I am. Thanks, and I'm actually clearing up. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reparations to be done here to get all this ugly, but we're working at it as hard as possible. So thanks uh, for the good wishes and filling in the blanks for the rest of you guys. We'll fill it in for you for another 55 minutes, including talking to Scott Grayson, our bud from Fox 29. He's going to join us in about 15 minutes. Mac and Mac on Birds 365.